So the question is, how did an American teacher in Chattanooga, Tennessee, become enmeshed in an ancient Japanese art form? There's a good answer to that question. Kiyotaku is simply Japanese for fish rubbing. You take an actual fish, you put ink or paint on it, and then you carefully press and rub paper or fabric against it to get an impression. Before cameras, before refrigeration, some brilliant Japanese fisherman came up with the idea, and voila, a perfect record of your fish. So at first, it wasn't art, it was just record keeping. But function evolved into form, and now it's, a, it's an art form practiced around the world. My name is Matt Monahan, and I teach Bible in the high school. I remember my first parent-teacher conference. I actually got frustrated because many of the parents, they would sit down, oh, my student loves your class, and they have so much fun in class. At the time, I thought, well, who cares if they're having fun? You should care about whether or not they're learning things in my class. But later, now that I've got children of my own, I've, I've realized that enjoying what they're doing is often a prerequisite to meaningful learning. Right now in the high school, we're just beginning a robotics program. It doesn't have a, a ton of structure, it doesn't have very much organization, and yet I have a team of students who they are finding time during the day to come in, to problem solve, to work on their robots, not for a grade, not for a competition, just because they love what they're doing. I don't have to do hardly anything but provide a space, a vision, maybe on Friday nights, Cokes and Doritos. So I started here as a history teacher. It was, it was incredible. My mentors were Gary Lindley and David Stanton, Bryant Black when he came back. It was like two father figures and a big brother. I was discipled uh, professionally, um, spiritually, and felt like they were pouring into me as I poured into my students. It was, it was a really beautiful model. After being here five or six years, I began a seminary degree, a master's in religion. Towards the end of my studies for that master's, CCS called me. Uh, to see if I would be interested in a job opening. They said, now this position is not history, it's Bible. And I said, oh, you don't understand, that's a home run. You know, that's exactly what I'd love to teach. Scripture itself, it's, it's majesty, it's power, it's consistency, it's coherence. To turn around and teach high schoolers, you know, the same subject matter was exciting. Sometimes you have the privilege of being there when the light bulb goes off in a student's head. Recently, we were talking about union with Christ, and it's a very deep and weighty doctrine. There's a student, in going through this discussion, for him to, to come alive in Christ, to have been thinking all this time that following Christ is about obeying a set of rules, and to be there when that is shattered in a good way is really a beautiful thing. Sometimes I second guess becoming a teacher. Most people know that being a teacher, you're not gonna get rich, but way back, when my wife Karen and I both graduated, we both made an intentional decision that whatever we did, we wanted to live lives that valued people over things. And we both became teachers, especially now with five kids. You wonder, did I, did I make the wrong decision? But in spite of the fact that teaching doesn't make a lot of money, it's a very rich and rewarding life to meet a student when they come in as a freshman, to watch them grow and watch them mature. What an honor to be a part of that. When there are students who I taught 17, 18 years ago, who are now my peers, and they're walking with the Lord, we keep up. There aren't a lot of jobs where, where you can say that. Teaching is a great way to value people over things, and teachers at CCS are investing in our students. If you want to talk about where you can spend your time and your money, there's so many places. When we first got married, we knew an older lady in the church, and I'll never forget this. She said, if you think about it, our kids are the only things that were ever given in life that last forever. Anything else you're gonna invest in, it's temporary. It's not forever. But our kids, our people, those are forever. We have so much to be thankful for. We have been blessed so generously by the Lord. And I think one of the ways that we can express our gratitude for these blessings is to be generous with them.